Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss professional skepticism in the auditing profession. As a human, we have certain tendencies and biases. For example, if we are honest, we tend to assume that others are honest as well. Also, we might have a predisposition to trust people who are familiar to us, who look like us, who talks like us. That's a bias. Now, there are no standard for professional skepticism in the auditing literature. Professional skepticism is a mindset. Simply put, we have to maintain a healthy skepticism, a questioning mindset when it comes to client and especially current clients. There are two primary components of, of professional skepticism. One, as I mentioned already, a questioning mindset. And what does that mean? It means don't accept things at face value. If the client tells you something, what should you do? Verify. Trust, but verify. Also, have a critical assessment of the audit evidence. What does that mean? It means examine the reliability of the evidence. Put evidence into perspective. Ask probing questions. Look for any inconsistencies. There are six elements to professional skepticism based on academic literature, not based on auditing standards. So what we're going to do in this session, discuss those six elements. There are six elements to professional skepticism based on academic research that could help auditors conduct audits in a professional skepticism. Let's take a look at the six elements. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. The six elements are questioning mindset, suspension of judgment, search for knowledge, interpersonal understanding, autonomy, and self-esteem. And if you know anything about Farhat, once we have a list of items, what are we going to do? We're gonna go over each item separately, starting with questioning mindset. In an audit setting, this means approaching data, assertions claimed by management, statements given to us that we don't accept at face value. What should we do? We should have healthy skepticism. Trust them, but verify. Encourage auditor always to dig deeper. Ask probing questions. Of course, it has to be prof in a professional way and maintain a skeptical lens. For example, during an audit, an auditor might come across an unusually large transaction toward the end of the quarter. Instead, accepting the transaction, they should ask for further evidence. Look more into this transaction background. Why is it toward the end of the year? Have a healthy skepticism. Two, suspension of judgment. Well, simply put, as we say, don't judge a book by its cover. Reserve conclusions until sufficient and credible evidence is presented. Don't judge the book by its title. Auditor must refrain from making hasty conclusion based on initial appearance. Initial appearance could be misleading. They must, they must gather enough evidence to evaluate comprehensively before making the final assessment. For example, if you think the company is profitable, it may not be profitable. Don't assume it has to be profitable. Just look toward the evidence that's going to show you the true picture, then determine whether the company is profitable or not. Search for knowledge. Auditors should not be satisfied with just obvious the obvious information presented. They should be keen to investigate underlying data, consult with various sources, corroborate the findings. If they give you some information, try to cross-reference it with something else to ensure a thorough and an accurate audit. Compare figures against bank statement, invoices, other related documentation to ensure all income and deductions and expenses are reported properly. Interpersonal understanding. Now, during an audit, recognizing that, that people might present information in a light favorable to their interests. And not because they're trying to lie. People might be biased. It's our nature. So auditor need to understand this human aspect and ensure that unbiased 
and complete picture is being presented to us. People, they may not be biased. They might be simply optimist. They, they might be biased toward their company. They might be positive. They might be telling you sales is growing because they're optimistic about the company. But in reality, that's not the case. Recognizing this, the auditor cross-referenced these statements with other sources to confirm accuracy. Autonomy. What does that mean? It means decide for yourself. Don't let anyone twist your arm. If you have to push back, push back. Auditors should be able to direct their own investigation without any undue influence from external parties, especially the client. Sometimes your manager at the audit firm might be also twisting your hand. You have to be careful. Their integrity, the staff integrity and the integrity of the audit require that they follow their professional judgment and ethical guidelines. For example, a company executives might try to influence an auditor to overlook a particular set of transaction. Well, you have to push back. You have to value your autonomy. Inform the executives of your responsibility to, to conduct the audit in an unbiased way and continue investigation without yielding to the pressure. Self-esteem is important as well. Well, it's very similar to autonomy. Auditor must have self-assurance to challenge the status quo. You have to have confidence in your knowledge. You might have to question high-ranking officials if needed, and you have to stand firm in their assessment even if you face pushback. Here what you have to have is what we call thick skin. During a compliance audit, an auditor might find that the company's standard practices do not align with regulatory requirements. Although they may claim they've been doing this for several years, you have to trust your expertise, you have to trust your judgment, and you have to highlight this discrepancy if they don't change in the final report. Stand up for yourself. This is part of professional skepticism. Let's take a look at a multiple choice from Farhat Lectures. Which of the following statement regarding professional skepticism is correct? In other words, there are, if there's one correct, it means three are incorrect. And it's easy to start with the incorrect one if you can spot them. Let's start with A. Professional skepticism is not required for audit of private companies? Well, why not? <laughs> so you will treat public companies different than private companies. Not at all. Professional skepticism is required in all engagement, whether that's an audit, a tax assignment, just make sure you maintain your professional skepticism as a professional. So A is out, that's easy. B, professional skepticism include asking probing questions, yes, and paying attention to inconsistencies. I would say this is a good candidate, let's hold on that. It means you have to ask questions. Yes, part of professional skepticism is question what you are giving and pay attention to inconsistent answers. It's easy for auditors to apply professional skepticism because they do not have a judgment bias regarding their client. On the contrary, it's not easy to apply professional skepticism, especially if you are dealing with your current clients because you've been with them for a period of time, you might be biased yourself. So it's not easy at all, especially with clients. You do have always you will have a judgment. We are biased. By nature, we are biased. So you have to be aware of this. It's difficult for auditors to apply professional skepticism through since they usually have the impression that their client are deceiving them throughout the audit process. You also don't want to do that. You also don't want to always assume they're deceiving you. That's not what we're saying. Okay? So you have to use healthy professional skepticism because you cannot have the impression that the client is always deceiving you. That's not good as well. So I would say B is the best answer. Professional skepticism include asking questions and paying attention to answers, looking for those inconsistencies in the answers. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, true, false questions. That's going to help you understand this concept, this important concept, whether you are a CPA exam candidate or an accounting student. Good luck, study hard, and of course, Stay safe.